Live from the Ball State News Center, this is News Link Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to News Link Indiana. I'm Brenton Roy. And I'm Felicia Donaldson. Thanks for joining us. A Syrian refugee family bound for Indiana was rerouted today after Governor Mike Pence announced that the state would not be accepting refugees until he can be sure that proper security measures are in place. The family was instead sent to Connecticut, where Governor Donnell Matt Malloy has been very open to refugees resettling in his state. Malloy had this to say in a press conference earlier today. Uh, it is the right thing to do for us to respond to this uh, uh, tragedy that's playing itself out. Uh, we have an obligation to uh, the other nations of the world to do our part. Um, it is uh, the right thing, the humane thing uh, to do. Uh, quite frankly, it's the, if you believe in God, it's the morally correct thing to do. Malloy went on to deliver some harsh words for Governor Pence when he referenced the controversial, con controversial RFRA bill Pence signed earlier this year, saying, this is the same guy who signed a homophobic bill this spring. A new Bloomberg poll shows most Americans side with Republicans in halting the program to accept Syrian refugees in the U.S. The Obama administration's plan would take 10,000 10, refugees next year. The poll found that 53% of Americans don't want Syrian refugees resettled in the United States. 28% said it should proceed without religious screening. Another 11% said only Christians fleeing ISIS and Syria's civil war should be allowed in. The results were split among partisan lines. GOP lawmakers and presidential candidates said terrorists could use the program to sneak into the U.S. French police sources tell CNN a Wednesday raid on a French apartment came right on time because they say the suspects were about to move on some kind of operation. Instead, eight people were detained, two suspected terrorists are killed, and the authorities are working to see if any of those killed are related to the suspected ringleader of Friday's terrorist attacks. Aaron McLaughlin has more from Paris. French President Francois Hollande says his country is forced into battle with ISIS. Que nous sommes dans la guerre. That we are at war. Wednesday, the country went on the offensive. Belgian and French police and security agencies picked up on a telephone wiretap, leading them to an apartment in Saint-Denis, a northern Paris suburb not far from where the deadly stadium attack happened Friday. The wiretap suggested a relative of Abdel Hamid Abaoud, the suspected Belgian ISIS ringleader of Friday's attacks, could be in the apartment. Heavily armed officers went in by the truckload for an hours-long operation. Inside, a woman in another apartment hid with her baby. They said to stay laid down on the floor, don't move, and turn off all lights, and that's what I did, and I hid. She says gunfire and explosions shook the building until officials announced the raid was over. Officials say they will use DNA analysis to determine who was killed. President Hollande says he will ask to extend France's state of emergency for three more months, giving authorities more powers in conducting searches and detentions. ISIS has already taken credit for the Russian jet crash that led to more than 200 deaths. Now the terrorist group says it can show how the airliner was brought down. CNN's Renee Marsh reports. This is the bomb ISIS claims they used to bring down the Russian passenger plane over the Sinai Peninsula. The picture posted in an ISIS propaganda magazine shows what appears to be explosive material concealed in a soda can, along with wires and a detonator with an on and off switch. CNN cannot independently verify the authenticity of the photo. The article says ISIS, quote, discovered a way to compromise the security at the Sharm el Sheikh International airport where Metrojet departed and a quote bomb was smuggled onto the airplane. We will search for them everywhere, wherever they're hiding. The news comes one day after Russia's president Vladimir Putin said nearly two pounds of explosive material blew the passenger plane out of the sky. There is doubt as to whether or not it's the device that was used to bring down the Russian aircraft. This retired ATF agent says the on and off switch on the detonator means a suicide bomber had to be in the cabin of the plane ready to flip the switch, raising questions about how someone could get on the plane with a device that could easily be detected by screening machines. A completely assembled device like this would be difficult to circumvent uh, normal security. U.S. officials say they ran the names on the passenger manifest list and found no red flags for anyone on board. 
ISIS previously claimed responsibility for the attack that killed 224 people. But if this is the bomb, it would be the first piece of evidence the group has put forward. The soda can has some Arabic writing uh, that puts it in the region. The, the, the detonator or blasting cap is a commercially manufactured cap that, that we have seen in that region. There is no way to know whether these claims are the truth or an intentional effort to divert intelligence and the security officials. The Russian government is offering a $50 million reward for information about those who brought down the plane. You know what, Brenton? Thanksgiving is come up, coming up, and I will say, first of all, I am thankful that this warmish weather is staying around. Well, you know what I'm not thankful for? I'm definitely not thankful for the weather that we had today. <laughs> Ellen, are we in the clear yet? Well, things are definitely calming down on the rain front, but those warm temperatures, they might be in jeopardy. Right now, things are pretty comfortable with temperatures at 60 degrees and the wind's pretty mild. It's south at 11 miles per hour. Temperatures around the board pretty consistent for the most part. 56 in Indianapolis, 53 in Lafayette. So that rain that we had today, it's passed by us. This long band of showers is to our east and we look a little closer and Indiana has all cleared up and should stay that way into tonight and tomorrow. So what to look forward to? Definitely those clearing up conditions much colder weather coming and maybe even our first snow of the season. That much and more coming up in weather. When News Link Indiana returns, find out how, uh, find out how, uh, how diversity here at the university has been challenged. And the Minnetrista returns with the annual event. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Ball State prides itself as being a diverse university. Recently, there were complaints about students disagreeing with the statement as a whole. Brittany Ehrman has the story. When people think of diversity, the word race is usually what comes to mind. At Ball State, we are strongly committed to diversity. Those are the words that stand on the university's website. However, in terms of religion, some students see that commitment a little differently. Hillel is a religious group for students that want to learn more about the Jewish culture. Hillel President Brooklyn Shire says it's difficult to find other students who practice the same religion. There's not a lot of Jews in Muncie. Usually when I put my college here, like I meet locals and then I'll meet fellow like college classmates and more than once I've been the first Jew they've ever met in their entire life. Sophomore member of Hillel Jack Salzman says he doesn't see too many diverse religious groups on campus. There's somewhat variety, but the problem is it, it's kind of all relative. Like on campus, you see a lot of Christian organizations. While they're different, it's still individually the same thing. As you can see behind me, Ball State has a Christian campus house where students can come and practice their religion in close proximity. The closest temple where Ball State Jewish students can practice their religion is a 28 minute walk from campus. I don't have a car. I could probably walk there. It could get dark and I would have to cross over a bad part of town. Schreier says she's seen more resources for Jewish students in other universities in Indiana. I wish we had the resources like a rabbi and a place, you know, that we could all like we could all feel like welcomed, like they do at Purdue and IU. They have like this own building for them. Assistant Professor of History Euron Ayalon stressed the importance of diversity and how it could benefit students. I believe that the more people from different backgrounds and experiences we have, uh, the better the educational experience we get overall as a collective. I'm tempted to say yes, the university should be doing more to attract different groups. Reporting for Newslink Indiana, I'm Brittany Ehrman. Schreier says anyone, not only Jewish students, are welcome to attend their meetings. The Minnetrista Cultural Center is a place that was built to honor the Ball Brothers. They have an event coming up at News Inc. Indiana's Brittany Carlin has the story. I'm here at Minnetrista, where I just spoke with Allison Schroeder, the Visitor Experience Manager. She told me about Minnetrista and the reason for it, and also about some events they have in the end of November coming up. One of the things that Minnetrista tries to do in our efforts to gather people together 
is to provide events and programs for the community. One of our programs for adults is called After Hours. It's a 21 and over event that really works to bring people together, just together in a social environment, but also to get them connected to local businesses. The Minnetrista Hard Cider event, which is this Friday, um, November 20th, from 6 to 8.30 p.m. here at Minnetrista, is the eighth of eight after hours this year. Um, it's in partnership with the Herat, so the evening includes two and a half hours of live entertainment um, by Jake Hendershot, who's a local Muncie musician, um, and the Herat, will, you will get um, samples with your $15 admission of the, their hard cider, which actually started at Minnetrista, so it's Minnetrista pressed apple cider turned hard by the Herat, and then they will be selling hard cider, and then it also include heavy hors d'oeuvres. So it's a chance for our friends to get together, hang out on a Friday evening, and support local business. If you would like to learn more about Minnetrista, or if you would like to come to the hard cider event this Friday, you can go to their website, minnetrista.net, for more information. From News Link Indiana, I'm Brittany Carlin. If you have any questions about hard cider this Friday, you can call 768-282-4848. An Iowa mom has beaten the odds and given birth to healthy identical triplets. And her doctor says she did it without any fertility drugs. As Bria Love reports, that's very rare. The McRory family just gained 30 more fingers and 30 more toes. The identical triplets, Tig, Sean, and Katal, were born on November 3rd, weighing between four and five pounds. Mom Bridget Hogan <laughs> says she was shocked when three babies appeared on her sonogram. I went out by myself after work and thought it was just routine. Their dad wasn't there and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it's crazy. We have a two-year-old. Yeah, we were happy with one. And then two was exciting, but yeah, we didn't picture a family of six. <laughs> Along with the adjustment in size, the family is adjusting to three times the care. It's been like round the clock, 24 hour care, bottles every two hours, just eating, changing, dressing, and doing it over again. <laughs> Hogan's doctor at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics says she was fantastic during her pregnancy. I knew she was miserable and yet she never complained. Dr. Hunter says the occurrence of triplets without the use of fertility drugs is so rare he can't put a number on it. I've seen numbers anywhere from one in 70,000 to one in a million. That they're very high risk pregnancies. A lot of things can go wrong. You can't do anything to prevent some of the complications. And uh, in this case, we were uh, blessed and, and got to 35 and a half weeks. Mom and the triplets went home after only three days in the hospital and now the babies are healthy and happy at home. According to a CDC study, in 2013 there are more than 3 million births in the U.S. Yet only 119 of those were triplets and that does not include the identical factor. And coming up, what does the weather have in store for us this week? Your full weather forecast is next. Stay tuned. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. You know, Felicia, today's weather was just terrible. But I gotta, I gotta ask it because we are getting into uh, November and yeah. us being in Indiana, I'm kind of wondering when our first snow of the season will be. You know, it would be nice to have some snow, but just for one day, it can melt and we can go back to that warmish weather. Ellen, what's going on with the weather? Well, you guys actually might be happy with weather for once if snow is what you're looking for, even for just a little bit, but we'll get to that in a little while. Looking at the almanac for today, we reached a high of 53 and a low of 56. So remember, this is pretty warm for this type of year. On average, we only get up to about 50 and a low of 33. So we've been a little bit warmer than what you can expect normally. But don't worry, we're going to fix that real soon. Current temperatures, 60 degrees and clear skies. A nice break from what we've had today. Winds south at 11 miles per hour, so relatively calm for the most part. Taking a look at radar, can't really see much of anything across the state of Indiana which is quite nice after this big band of rain that we experienced all day with rain-wise. 
so it's nice to see it clearing up. The rainfall over the past 24 hours, 0.37 inches here in Muncie. Terre Haute got the most at 0.68 inches, but that doesn't seem like an, a lot, but that's about a third of what we got for the month in total, so that's a good number. So those cooler temperatures I'm talking about, warm here, 60 in Muncie, but you see 50 in Kansas City, 43 in Minneapolis, 26 in Billings. Now this colder air, it's on its way, so we're going to see a sharp cool down. But for tonight, it's going to be mostly clear with pretty mild temperatures, down to about 45 degrees, and the wind not too bad either, southwest at 13 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow's going to be pretty nice too. With at 8 a.m., a little cool at 45 degrees, and then we're going to heat up throughout the day where it's going to get mostly clear with a high of 50 degrees. So over the next couple of days, that's where we're going to see that cool down in temperatures. So Thursday morning, not too bad, heats up. But into Friday morning, we're going to be right around freezing. And that's going to seem warm for us when it comes to the weekend temperatures. But temperatures aren't the only thing we're looking out for the weather. So Thursday morning, we are going to see a little bit of cloud cover that will eventually clear out and lead to a pretty nice Thursday afternoon and into the evening. Friday, we're going to see some clouds start moving in into the evening. And then look at this, that blue and purple, those aren't your eyes messing with you, that's snow. So we're going to take a closer look at it. For the beginning of the afternoon on Saturday, we should see some rain and likely to wrap back around, we might get some snow flurries in the afternoon. Now flurries, that doesn't mean a foot of snow, that doesn't even mean much snow at all. And likely, if it does come down, it won't stick or stay around. So we'll see our first snow possibly for Saturday, but it won't stay around for too long. So our seven day forecast, clearing skies for Thursday, Friday looking pretty nice, mostly sunny. Saturday, that rain snow mix at 40 degrees. Sunday though, that's when things are gonna get really cold. Morning temperature of only 22 degrees. And we're only gonna heat up to 33, just above freezing. So get ready for that. And Monday into the start of next week, things are gonna be pretty nice and close to average with 43 on Monday, 45 on Tuesday, and 46 for Wednesday. Well, Brenton, it seems like you do get your snow that you want this weekend. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry I even asked. <laughs> Just well, a little. <laughs> coming up, uh, the Ball State men's basketball prepares for a busy weekend. And the women's basketball team gets set to hit their home floor. Your sports headlines are next. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12 year old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Good evening, folks, and welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Peter Hood with your sports. Well, the men's basketball team was back at practice today following Monday's win over Eastern Illinois. The Cardinals earned their first win of the season against the Panthers inside Worthen Arena just 48 hours ago. Bo Calhoun and Sean Sellers each had double doubles en route to a 73-56 victory. Ball State is now 1-1 one one on the season after Friday's loss at Bradley. Uh, they have now turned their attention to this weekend's tip-off tournament in Richmond, Kentucky. The Cardinals will play three games in three days this weekend in an effort to simulate a conference tournament. They'll play host to Eastern Kentucky on Saturday, Longwood, or excuse me, Eastern Kentucky Friday, Longwood on Saturday, and South Carolina State on Sunday. After practice today, head coach James Whitford talked about how his team is preparing for the unique challenge that this weekend will bring. Well, it does change, like even for today, for example, you, know, you don't want to invest all your time in Eastern Kentucky because they play a really unique style, crazy style. But you come back the next night and you have a totally different style. So you have to really, you know, make sure you can play a lot of different styles. So we spent a lot of time today working on just being who we are. And, uh, and then tomorrow we'll kind of really focus in on Eastern Kentucky more. But uh, yeah, it changes a lot. You know, you got to be ready to play a different style every night. You know what? That's what it's like in Cleveland. You got to be able to do one thing one night, one thing the next night, one thing the third night. And uh, so it's great preparation for us. The Cardinals' first game this weekend will tip off at 6 p.m. Uh, at Eastern Kentucky. 
Meanwhile, the women's team will be at home tomorrow for the first time this season. They are coming off of a 72 to 66 loss at Charlotte last Friday. Mariah Monaco led four double figure scorers with 18 points for BSU in that game. Tomorrow, they'll welcome the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers to town. The ladies lost to the Hilltoppers by 25 last season, but beat them by eight when WKU visited Worthen Arena two years ago. Western has already received votes to be ranked this year, and they are picked to finish third in a loaded Conference USA. It'll be a challenge for head coach Brady Sally's team, but he says he and his Cardinals are looking forward to continue to improve as non-conference play rolls along. You know, the, the whole pre-conference is about getting yourself ready for the conference. We've challenged ourselves with a really tough schedule. Uh, and, and really what it boils down to is how you handle the different adversities that you're going to face all year, whether it be a loss, whether it be a bad half, a bad shoot night, what have you, uh, and, and how you come out of that. And so uh, for us, uh, we don't talk too much about we want to win this amount of games or win this championship. We, that's all a byproduct of if you're playing at your best and you've got a good team and we feel like we do have a good team. PM tomorrow inside Worthen Arena. I would encourage everyone to come out. Should be a very entertaining game. Uh, Indiana Pacers in action tonight in Philadelphia. At last check, they were up by 32 points late in the fourth quarter, so they're going to move to seven and five on the year with the win over the winless 76ers. Oh, that sounds awesome. Thanks, Peter. And when we return, find out what popular show is getting canceled. And McDonald's regulars may be surprised about one major change that's coming soon. Two, the final chapter in the Hunger Games trilogy is set to hit theaters tomorrow at midnight. The popular science fiction series starring Jennifer Lawrence, Josh Hutcherson, and Liam Hensworth is said to end on, a, on an exciting note with critics giving the final movie a 7 out of 10. College students everywhere will be upset because come January 4th, McDonald's will be, will be nixing their popular dollar menu. Ditching the dollar menu will make room for their new Pick 2 menu, where you can pick two items for $2. While there are plans to adjust what is offered on the new menu a few weeks after it is released, current choices include the popular McChicken, McDouble, Small Fries, and Mozzarella Sticks. McDonald's is also planning to introduce new items such as fried churros and extra thick gourmet burgers, as if New Year's resolutions weren't hard enough to keep already. That's all for your entertainment news. Brenton, Felicia, back to you. Thanks, Brian. That's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Uh, be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.